the Sea of Wonder! Sea of Wonder! Come on now, let's dive it down under! Featuring Swedish sea Jack! Of sea of Wonder! Come on now, let's dive it down under! Seymour Crab! Sea of Wonder! Sea of Wonder! Come on now, let's dive it down under! Hello, 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 and welcome once again to the Sea of Wonder. I be Swedish Jack, and this be Seymour Crabs and the Blowfish Band. Everyone give them a hand. Nice to be seeing all of you. We are going to have a great time together learning about God and his word. And, and we are especially going to be having a great time because Danny the Dogfish won't be here. Wait, what? I said we'd be having a great time because that scurvy, greedy Danny the Dogfish won't be here. Uh, who's Danny the Dogfish? Why, he's Danny. I? And he's a dogfish. I gathered that. It seems you really don't like him. I don't. See, I used to live in the coral reef called the Darwin Mounds off the coast of Scotland. Beautiful place. But I had this neighbor. Danny. Dogfish are what you call opportunistic feeders. They just swim around eating whatever they want in front of them. I worked so hard to grow myself a little kelp garden outside the coral cave I lived in. And every day, Danny would swim by and munch on them until they were all gone. Then he came by and he ate the barnacles. Then he ate the mushroom coral. Then he ate the anemone. Soon, my house was ugly and destroyed. I had no food, and myself and several other crabs had to move away because of old Danny the dogfish. All right, but you're here now, so what brought all this on? I got a call from Danny on my shell phone. He was all crying about how his home got destroyed by the rough tide and everything, and, and he asked if I knew of a place that he could stay, but I said, No, Danny, you selfish, gorging bonehead. You shouldn't be called a dogfish with all that you eat. You should be called a hogfish. Then I hung up the phone on him. Ha! Well, Seymour, I understand your frustration with him, but that wasn't very kind of you. But Danny's a dogfish, a natural-born enemy of crabs. He would have done the same thing to me. Well, that may be, but Jesus tells us to be kind even to our enemies, Seymour. What? Why? Well, I think today's fruits may help you understand. Fruits? You mean, we're talking about two of them? Aye, but first let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit into this time with us. Holy Spirit, we give you our minds, our hearts, and our attention. You are welcome in this time to teach us more about you. We ask that you speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. Now, Seymour, if you would please go over our memory verse with our friends. Oh, sure. Everyone repeat after me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These things are always good. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Great job. Now, let's see which fruits we're talking about today. Kyle, bring in the fruits. Okay. Alright, it looks like we have kindness and goodness. Well, I know that kindness be like being nice to people and courteous, but, but what be goodness? Well, kindness is a bit more than that, Seymour. See, in Ephesians 4.32 it says, Be kind and loving to each other, forgive each other, 
as God forgave you in Christ Jesus. So, a part of kindness is forgiving? Aye. Jesus did us the ultimate kindness by dying on the cross to take away our sins. So we need to have the kindness he has. Now, it's time for us to see what our revelation is today with our message in the bottle. Okay, today we be saying, I am kind to all. But what about evil people like Danny? What about people who want to do bad things to us? Well, we don't have to be best friends with those people, and we can always defend ourselves when evil people try to do bad things. But we must always be kind and honor them as Jesus would. Jack, you've been in a lot of sea battles, just like all those battles in the Bible. How in the world can we still be kind like Jesus to our enemies even during a battle? Think of it this way. Showing kindness to your enemy is finding it in your heart to put aside their wrongs and love them as a human and a creation of God. It's remembering that even though they are doing evil, God still created them and God still loves them. Wow, that's crazy to think about. No matter how evil someone's choices may be, God still loves them. Aye. Well, then what does goodness mean? I mean, that's the other fruit, right? Aye, it is. The word good is used so much in our everyday lives that it almost loses its meaning. For example, uh, how many times a day do we say, good morning, or good luck, or good work? But the Bible tells us that the word good actually means holy, pure, and righteous. So goodness is basically being good, like God. Aye, the fruit of the Spirit, goodness, is not just good behavior. It's having a heart that seeks the righteousness of God. But goodness is only possible through God's grace and mercy. Now, we're going to hear a Bible story in just a bit about how we can show kindness and goodness to the people around us. We'll be right back.
Hello, everyone! It's time for Toy Box Theater! I am Spencer Sock. And my name is Matt. And today, we are going to be telling the story of the Good Samaritan and learning what goodness and kindness look like. A long time ago, when Jesus was teaching throughout Israel, Jesus would be played by Aquaman, Master of the Oceans. Fantastic. While Jesus was teaching, a very religious man wanted to make Jesus look silly. So, he asked a trick question. Jesus, how do I get into heaven? Oh, I know this one. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you must love your neighbor as yourself. Correct. But the religious man wasn't always very nice to people. And he thought that it was okay. So he asked Jesus again. And who exactly is my neighbor? Jesus answered him with a story. The story of the Good Samaritan. Ooh, story transition. There once was a man who was traveling from a faraway city. Patrick Stewart, I'm just a traveling man going down the road. Uh, do, do, da, do, do, dee. -de. Suddenly, he was attacked by a group of thieves. Give us your belongings and snacks, traveler. What's <laughs> No, not my Pringles and gummy worms, no! The thieves took everything he had, and then they beat him up and left him lying half dead by the roadside. Oh, oh, so much pain. Oh, I'm an incredible actor. Oh. As he lay there in pain and misery, he heard footsteps. Oh, oh, someone! Help me, please! I hope it isn't one of the same men who beat me up! He waited and listened for what seemed like hours as the footsteps faded in the distance. It happened to be a priest who came by, but when he saw the man lying beside the road, he decided to take a different road because he was in a hurry and didn't want to be bothered. Hello there. Look at this. The city ought to come and clean up this riffraff. I don't have time for this. The poor man was certainly glad that it wasn't one of the robbers, but he surely wished that somebody would come along to help him. After a little while, he heard footsteps again. He wanted to call out and get the attention of the person walking by, but he was in so much pain, all he could do was moan. Moan! Moan! Moaning! Oh, 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 everyone, look at my performance! Oh, 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 moan, moan. This time, the man who passed by was a Levite, a well-known teacher in the temple. Surely he would want to help the poor man, but when he saw the man lying on the side of the road, he looked down, then turned his head and walked right by, completely ignoring the poor hurting man. Ew, a gross man on the side of the road. Maybe if I don't make eye contact, he won't notice me. It wasn't long until the man heard another set of footsteps. He wanted to believe that this person would reach down to help him, but he had already been passed by twice and dared not even hope for relief. The man who was traveling down the road this time was... Brett McPherson, who came to fight the bad guys who robbed the man. Sir, where are they? I thirst for justice. Um, no. Matthew, it was a stranger from Samaria. Oh, okay, the Samaritan will be played by Rocket. Here I come, just a Samaritan on a walk. Nobody really liked people from Samaria. It was very unlikely that he would want to help. But as he passed by, he noticed the man who was lying beaten and bloody on the side of the road. He felt sorry for him and wanted to help. He got off his donkey and bent down next to the man to get a closer look at the wounds. Hmm, looks like we got a major case of the boo-boos and the ouchy wouchies, buddy. Gently, he wrapped bandages around the sores and helped him to his feet. Then, he carefully put the man on his very own donkey and took him to the nearest hotel. He stayed with the man overnight and took care of him. Oh, how nice. Is this a uh, five-star hotel? Wow, luxurious. The next morning, he had to leave, but he knew he couldn't take the man with him. When he paid the bill, he gave the innkeeper extra money, saying, 
take care of him, feed him, and make sure that he has everything he needs. If he owes you any money after he gets well and leaves, write it down, and I'll pay the bill next time I come by. And I, Red McPherson, will pay back those bandits for their crimes against you. Uh, no, no, Matthew, put Brett away. Okay. The Samaritan showed kindness to the man by helping him, even though they were not friends. And he showed goodness by going the extra mile and paying for the man to rest and get better. Very generous. Jesus, after finishing this story, asked the religious man, Which of these three men was a neighbor to the stranger on the street? The one who stopped and helped him. That's right. Now you go and do the same. Jesus wanted him and every one of us to know that the way God's kingdom works is through kindness and goodness, loving God and loving our neighbor. When we do those things, we are living the way God wants us to live. The end. Hey, world changer. We're going to posture our hearts to worship the Lord. He calls us sons and daughters, so we just say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Show us who we are and who you are. Show us who you are. Show us how you love us. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so good. You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You've been so kind to me You've been so, so kind to me Oh, your love is all. 
have a purpose for us God, you have a purpose for me You have a purpose for me Oh, and you never end to love Jack, that story about the Good Samaritan was, um, interesting. The Samaritan was kind and good to the Hebrew man, even though they were enemies. He was even so generous as to pay for the Hebrew man's hotel, even though he wasn't getting anything in return. Aye, that's the kindness and goodness that can only come from the spirit of Jesus. I think I'm going to call Danny back and tell him about the Sea of Wonder, if you don't mind. Maybe he can find a nice place to live around here. I think that's a great idea, Seymour. In fact, he can even hitch a ride on our ship. And I know a good place perfect for a dogfish in the lagoon over by Joy Jungle. Oh, that would be lovely. And Seymour, I'm really proud of you for wanting to grow the fruits of kindness and goodness. Thank you, Jack. I just want to be more like me hero, Jesus. Me too. Now, maybe you're watching this in... You've heard about Jesus, but you don't know if you've accepted his gift of forgiveness that he so kindly offers to you and to me. Jesus loves you so much and wants to be your very best friend. And trust me, he is the greatest friend you could ever ask for. If you want to make Jesus your king, just repeat this out loud after me. Jesus, I love you. Thank you for coming to the earth and dying for me. Thank you for forgiving me. I ask that you come into my heart and make me new. I declare you as my king. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and you meant it, then I am so proud of you and the gift of forgiveness is yours and Jesus will never leave you. He is your best friend for all eternity. Oh, I love my friend Jesus. Aye. Right. Now let's wrap everything up with our final reflection. Yo, ho, the final reflection leads you in the right direction. Yo, ho, the final reflection this week, ask yourself, how can I show the fruit of kindness and goodness to those around me? Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And when he does, you can write it down or draw a picture of it. There are many ways that we can grow the fruit of kindness and goodness in our lives like being friendly to someone at school, or being generous and giving our possessions or time to others. And you can always ask the Holy Spirit to help you grow those fruits in your daily encounters or daily time with God. I bet I could put together a little box of knickknacks and goodies for Danny the Dogfish when he gets here. I know I would love a good gift basket. I think that's a great idea, Seymour. Now, let's go over to Port Master Smithers with his final thoughts. Smithers! Well, and that's all the time we have. Remember to be kind and practice goodness, and we'll see you next time here on the Sea of Wonder. Time to ship out.